you can hear me. Ah, okay, lovely. Okay, uh, my name is Martha Shumba. All right, yeah, Shumba, that's my surname. It means lion. I was born uh, in a small town called uh, Mashingo in Zimbabwe and uh, also uh, from another district called Mberengwa. And I migrated to South Africa at the age of 17. So I've lived half my life in Zim where I was born and almost half my life <laughs> in South Africa where I migrated to. So when I'm speaking, I don't know uh, who I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from. Uh, I might be Zimbabwean, I might be South African. So <laughs> we, can, we can just, uh, you know. So thank you to World Leader Summit for recognizing us. Um, in 2020, we got our award uh, It's one of the best startups, which is great. It has taken us to levels. I mean, whenever I put that picture or just say we got our award, it was, it, it, it has opened doors. Like I go and sit in meetings in Zim and be like, oh, we are connected, you know, to world leaders uh, of a hundred people and we come with an army. So when I'm going to present out there, I'm going with everybody from World Leader Summit as the army that is um, not behind us, but, you know, our partners and collaborators who are holding our hands in this journey. So I, I always um, talk about uh, power is in the wallet, which is which translates to the power is in the in the pocket, in the money, economic empowerment, economic development. It's not easy, you know, being being here after COVID, things just went south during COVID. Um, a lot of people were left stuck. We didn't know where to go, but thanks to uh, technology, innovation and technology, we are online. But here is the thing. Okay, I that you're not. Sent. Okay, am I still on or something is happening? Okay, so this is this is me coming from a village and thinking about uh, where I come from. Berengwa, Mashingo, let's talk about Zambia, let's talk about Malawi, let's talk about rural Uganda, Mpumalanga in South Africa. There are a lot of people who could be in this summit. There are a lot of people who could be hearing this, but because of the digital inequality and divide first in rural Africa, we, 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 we don't have them here. They don't have access to technology. They don't have access to computers. Most of them don't know how to use a computer. They've never seen a computer before. Giving you a story, my own story. In 2010, I was out, out of high school already. I'd never touched a computer. I didn't know how to use a computer. Most of the jobs required that. I would apply for jobs as a receptionist. I would apply a job in any office work. They want somebody who know how to type. And I'm right there from the village. We've never seen that. We don't know how it looks like. Even to switch it on, it was just something else. So that's where my story began. Like this digital divide and inequality faced in rural Africa is putting us to a disadvantage when we want to access other things or opportunities offered around the world. And this is not um, just one in billions of people out there either case study Africa who are facing this very same challenge and is taking too long. And the divide put us 100, uh, I can say 10 to 20 years behind in everybody who is in, the, in, in a developed country. If you see a 17 year old, um, a 17 year old girl in the USA or in Europe is different from a 17 year old in Berengwa or in Mashingo. The gap is too huge because they, they will finish school, after finish, finishing school, by luck or by chance, they will find themselves maybe in South Africa or uh, yeah, which is much better now. Um, they find themselves in another area where they will learn computers and then, and then, and then. It's, it's kind of uh, tough. So I come from the background of mainly um, N NPOs, NGOs, the civil society organization, where I've been with the organization of African youth since uh, 20, 2013. Um, I'm part of the Pan-African ICT Association. I'm also uh, doing radio broadcasting at uh, Radio 54 African Panorama. 
And we, in these organizations, we've tackled different issues, uh, including technology. They are also our partners. So rather than to just go on being an activist, what we call now uh, professional marchers, I decided that we need to move more into economic empowerment through skills development and entrepreneurship. I have a foundation called the She Dead Foundation, uh, which tra translates to uh, the mother and the father coming together or a community raising a child. So our primary focus where activism is concerned is the boy child, young men, as well as youth. But in this case, I will speak on, um, on the innovation and, and technology, including uh, our entrepreneurship. So we started uh, this, this program on skills development and entrepreneurship and why skills development and entrepreneurship in Africa, because many African countries are bearing the burden of economies that uh, have largely failed uh, to include participation of most of their citizens, especially young people in rural areas. We now have this group of uh, um, uh, trapped uh, young people uh, on the sidelines because they are educated but inexperienced and there are a whole lot of them. Police makers are battling to uh, find solutions to make this problem go away. So unlike developed countries, after, uh, Africa still lacks a comprehensive entrepreneurship strategy for its citizen. And this is not lessening the unemployment that is still annoyingly, I think around 25%. So this is where we decided as civil society, we need to come in. We cannot leave everything uh, to uh, the government and say they need to, they need to, yes, they play a very uh, a major role, but if you have migrated to Johannesburg and learned a skill, it is time for you to go back to the same village where you identified the challenge or the problem and you feed them. You raise a child, you pick a child and say, it took me 20 years or it took me 15 years to learn how to use a computer or to get to where I am. I can lessen that period of somebody else who is still in primary school. I can introduce this. So we started the, um, she did iHub, Information Hub, uh, which is now uh, operating in, um, in Uganda. We are also setting up in Malawi, Zimbabwe as well, and South Africa. We started the online uh, trainings um, uh, as of August, but the numbers were not, uh, were not so much because of what I, I mentioned. Most of our beneficiaries, um, they, they've never used a computer, they've never touched the computer. And with um, you know, the charges or the data bundles in Africa, it's, it's becoming very, very difficult. So we are, we are coming in with a solution to set up hubs in rural Africa. And the aim is to be a vehicle for the promotion of the culture of innovation and entrepreneurship in rural Africa, aimed at digital skills development, digital skills transfer for human capital capacity development, providing youth digital transformation. The Innovation and Research Hub also provide SMME business development support to startups within various sectors such as information and communication technology, advanced manufacturing, green economy, and bioeconomy. Our vision is to take innovation to the people by establishing co-creation and innovation spaces in the townships and rural areas, thereby giving local communities access to computers, internet, entrepreneurship, mentors, networking opportunities. ICT skills development and entrepreneurship. Uh, we are running this, this program, which is aiming uh, to bridge the digital um, divide, enhance the culture of entrepreneurship. The 4IR for rural economic development as well is a program founded to address the critical need for the inclusion of rural youth to strengthen economic uh, prosperity through strong innovations, skills, and entrepreneurship uh, development. Sorry, I'm a bit uh, fast because of um, our time. I hope uh, everything is, is going smooth. So we also respond to the low rate of digital inclusion, digital skills transfer, innovation, and research. 
uh, most especially among the township entrepreneurs and the rural uh, people in Africa. So we're not only focusing uh, on providing opportunities for talented or promising uh, township-based youth, but also aims to develop solutions. We acknowledge that the greatest tool in empowering a nation is to implant knowledge and transfer skills to the people, and that relates to our skills training division uh, of arming our people with the skills. Um, uh, like I highlighted, our objectives increase economic participation of rural, rural youth in Africa to imbue and popular, pop, popularize the culture of innovation and entrepreneurship among young people, um, and to reduce acute challenges faced by rural youth to realize economic potential, increase financial capacity for rural youth to increase rural development minimize influx into urban areas and migration. I mean, given what's been happening in Southern Africa, the issue of migration always comes up and we answer this, uh, connecting it to um, only to, um, uh, what you call it, political instability, but not also looking at how we can come in as uh, organizations to uh, address the economic challenges uh, first build a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship in Africa through synergy of ICT and business startup training, increase information dissemination channels, increase science, technology, engineering, and mathematics pass rate to qualify for information and technology uh, uh, rollout. So what's been happening is that most, most young people are not able to enroll for uh, IT uh, degrees simply because of their uh, uh, marks in, in uh, STEM, STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, and uh, mathematics. So to add to the computer uh, iHubs or labs, uh, we are also adding uh, the libraries that are focusing on STEM books, your science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and do pay-to-pay -pay education, where those who are very good in mathematics are able to come in and uh, teach uh, the others. Um, for information dissemination, we use platforms like this, we also use uh, radio senders, like I mentioned, the Radio 54. We've got Pictas, uh Radio 98.7. We've got your SABC, where we also go and, and, and speak about what we are offering. We make sure that the information is, um, is, is transferred from one organization to another. We have partnered with so many organizations. We are working uh, with so many people. I know uh, some of my people who are listening from Malawi, from Zambia, from Zim, from Uganda, from all over Africa. Um, so we don't have to always uh, go there and, and register. We just um, partner with an existing uh, organization. So we have uh, uh, that partnership with PITA, we have the Dominion, uh, Dominion Business Investment, which have partnered with because of their uh, Cisco accreditation. We are in, in, in partnership with Comchia as well. So we're gonna uh, start rolling out our programs in January uh, that we have partnered with, with Comchia. Uh, <clears throat> we have uh, the radios that I mentioned. We've done uh, presentations at UN events as well early this year. Um, I'm also part of the uh, Africa Civic Engagement Academy uh, 2022 cohort, which is uh, powered by uh, the University of Georgia and sponsored by the US uh, um, department. Uh, with partnerships with the Uganda local uh, government, their Department of Education, as well as their. Um, what are some uh, of the clubs we have? Yes, yes, yes. Time, yes, please. Yes, my time. I wasn't watching. So, with all that, um, you can follow me on my social media. That's Mata Shumba, Mata Mata Renda Shumba. You can find me on my social networks. And thank you so much for everybody who is here and those who are watching. Thank you. I can tell you something.